Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Hi, welcome back. In this second lecture for Chapter 4, I'm going to discuss how we solve the equation, the linear equation, that we obtained by linearizing an autonomous vector field about an equilibrium point. So this is where we ended up with last time. This is the linear equation. We write it in a simple form here where A is the n by n Jacobian matrix and we want to talk about solving it. Well, this is the solution. Now you say, wait a minute, how is that the solution? Well, you take it, you plug it in the left-hand side, dif differentiate it first with respect to t, plug it in the right-hand side and show that you have equality. Yeah, but what is this e to the at? Okay, that we need to talk about a little bit. We're not going to go into it a lot. Probably at this point in your education, you haven't had the linear algebra course, which goes through this in great detail, but that's okay. We're going to introduce just what you need in this chapter to solve many problems of this type. We're going to focus mainly on two by two problems when we do explicit calculations. So e to the at, the exponential of a matrix times a scalar. Whenever you see exponentials, one of the easiest ways or one fruitful way of understanding what it means is through the exponential series. And that's what e to the at means. This is the n by n identity matrix here. And then we just have at plus 1 over 2 factorial a squared t squared and so on. Now each term in the exponential series, we know what it means. We know how to, we know how to take powers of matrices, add them up, multiply them by scalars. And this is what the exponential means. Now, does it converge? What does this mean as a series? Um, that I'm not going to go through in a lot of detail. I've given you some references, but it converges absolutely, and we can differentiate it with respect to t term by term. So, if you want to know what the derivative of e to the at is, if you just differentiate this series term by term, it's a simple matter to show that it's a e to the at, and a commutes with any power of a. You can prove that. Generally, matrices do, do not commute, but in this situation, the relevant matrices a and e to the at do commute, and this is true. So, take this expression, go back and plug it into the equation. y dot is d by dt of my candidate for a solution. That's a e to the at y naught, but e to the at y naught is just y. So that's a y, and we're done. That was pretty slick. Go back and work out the details. But that still begs the question, how do I compute e to the at? All right. Well, if a happen to be a diagonal matrix like this, even n by n, go back and plug it into the exponential series and you'll see that you have an exponential series for the scalars, the eigenvalues, lambda 1 through lambda n, down the diagonal and zeros elsewhere. So it's very easy to see that e to the at is just the exponential of the eigenvalues along the diagonal in this case. Ah, so that gives you a strategy what to do. Let's transform variables. Let y equal tu. Y are the variables we're in. t is a transformation. What is it? We're going to see as we get to the end. We're going to choose it in a way that uh, does what we want. Now, you'll see what I mean by that. So let's differentiate it. y dot equals tu dot. t doesn't depend on time. I didn't put that in as, as uh, 
an assumption, but that's the case. T is a constant n by n matrix. Okay, but y dot is ay, but y is tu. Now let's isolate u dot, and we can see from the expression for 18 that u dot is t inverse at, and we can write the initial condition in terms of the initial condition for u in this way. Okay. Let's define uppercase lambda, sorry, yeah, uppercase lambda to be t inverse at. And then in that case, a happens to be t lambda t inverse. Now, for e to the at, Let's plug in that definition for a, t lambda t inverse. And we get the exponential series. Instead of a in each term multipl that multiplied by a, a raised to an appropriate power, we have t lambda t inverse. Now, notice this equality here. This happens a lot in matrix algebra t lambda t inverse raised to the n is t lambda to the n t inverse. So if you plug that into the exponential series, you'll see that e to the a t is t e to the lambda t t inverse. Now, if you were able to choose t so that lambda was diagonal. In other words, if you could diagonalize A, you would be back in that original situation where in, the, in these new coordinates, you just compute E to the lambda T by exponentiating the eigenvalues down the diagonal. So can you diagonalize any n by n matrix? No, unfortunately, you can't. There are a lot of issues, and I don't want to dwell on those quite a bit in this course. Let's, let's look at the 2 by 2 case. There are three cases that we're going to see quite often in the 2 by 2 case. Two real eigenvalues. They could be equal. The point is, you can diagonalize lambda in this case, it's an assumption. If they're equal, that's an assumption that you can diagonalize it. If they're different, you can always diagonalize it. Real eigenvalues. Two identical eigenvalues that are non-diagonalizable and complex conjugate pairs of eigenvalues. We're dealing with real vector fields, so eigenvalues, if, they, if you have complex eigenvalues, they occur in complex conjugate pairs. So this little table shows you these three cases. For these three cases, the what I say the canonical form, the diagonalized form that you can know that you can put them in are these are these forms. And we'll see how this works in the next chapter. And e to the lambda for each of those, we know that if it's diagonal, it's going to look like that. If it's not diagonal, it's going to look like that. You just put it in the exponential series. And this last one is a bit more tricky. Okay. So I've really hit you with a lot in this lecture. You're going to need to go back and look at a few of the calculations that I did. A lot of the linear algebra I'm asking you to trust me on for right now. We're going to see plenty of examples worked out in the following chapter. So in the next lecture, I'm going to talk about Problem set four, the problems at the end of this chapter. So bye for now.